You're watching Coin TV, Channel 6. Live from the heart of Portland, the news station for Oregon and Southwest Washington. This is Newsroom 6. You may have noticed, by the way, that Dale has uh, left us here alone. And she's not off goofing out around. We want to let everybody know she's working. She's at the Metro Y with Ken Sprague, an expert in weightlifting. She has advice about kids and pumping iron. We'll be back with that. There's been a turnaround in recent years when it comes to weightlifting in kids. What was once believed to be taboo is now encouraged. Dale is now at the Multnomah YMCA with weightlifter Ken Sprague and his son Chris. Hi. Mark, thank you. There is a now a, a kind of a new rule when it comes to weightlifting. Children can lift weight, they just can't lift heavy weight. This is for children that are still growing. They need to lift light weights and use a lot of repetition. To help us understand a little bit more about this now is Ken Sprague and his son Chris. They have both authored the book called Weight and Strength Training for Kids and Teenagers. And I tell you, there's been a turnaround when it comes to the American Academy of Pediatrics. They now endorse weightlifting, and only a few years ago it was taboo. They were worried about injury when it comes to lifting weights. What's the now? What's the new thought now? Well, the new thought now is that weight training is great for kids. Not only okay, but great. In fact, it acts as a preventer of injuries by strengthening the bones, muscles, and uh, stabilizing the joint of growing children. What I would worry about is in, in our culture, a lot of folks think if one is good, two is better. How do we monitor kids so that they don't overdo it? You know, that is the problem with our culture. And a, a young child, too, wants to see how much he or she can lift. The best rule of thumb is to find a weight that a child can lift eight to 10 times. That's going to ensure that that one-time stress is not too great. Now, Chris, I'm sure your life has changed a great deal. You're now an author, and of course, you've been lifting weights for how long? You are 11 years old right now, right? Yes, I've been technically lifting for since I was six, using my body as resistance, doing push-ups, pull-ups, or squat jumps but I've worked with weight for about a year and a half. Now, when you say your body has resistance, those of us that don't lift weights don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? Well, for example, if you're doing push-ups, your body is the weight that you're lifting. That's body resistance. Well, let's do a little push-up. Show us how it would be done. This does differ th from uh, the adult push-up. That's thing. right. Well, for example, a beginning child would do a push-up as some females find they have to do later in life on hands and knees. It's really relative to how strong the individual is. For example, Chris is demonstrating one for a, a younger child, maybe just beginning, maybe a five-year-old, for example. Now, Chris, would you shift to a regular push-up, please? Here, by going back to the toes and the hands, Chris is, has increased the resistance on his triceps and shoulders. That's great, Chris, thank you. And by re increasing the resistance, of course, uh, the body adapts to that increased resistance by getting stronger. Now, when it comes to lifting metal, we had you do a little lifting a little bit earlier on. Who chooses what weight you lift? Is it up to you now because you've been doing this for a few years, or is it still dad? It's pretty much up to me now. What I think I can lift six to eight times or so, and sometimes he helps me a little. <laughs> Show off a little bit for us. What, what can you do and how do you do it? Now, does the position differ also for children? Have a seat, yeah, Chris, well, or stand up. For example, up. Let's, uh, let's show something that a uh, young person might do for their uh, legs. Want to try some uh, lunges, Chris? For example, and watching Chris here, Chris works his entire leg, skiers. This is great for skiers. Wow. But Chris is working his entire leg here within safety parameters, for example. If he were to drop that weight, what's the worst that could happen? The weight drops maybe a foot. Whereas an adult may choose a tougher exercise, a squat with heavy weights on his or her shoulders, not appropriate for a child. Different safety parameters there. Years ago when the American Academy of Pediatrics Thanks, did, thank you, Chris, they did studies on kids and weightlifting. They found there was a lot of injury in the shoulder, the lower back, and the knees. Are there any precautions children need to take in particular? Ace bandages? Is, or, or, or uh, uh, building up the muscles that surround those joints? Well, again, the primary precaution is not going in there and saying, hey, I'm going to try to lift as much as I can. To start out with an appropriate weight, now appropriate, that's a vague word, but that, again, means a weight that can be lifted eight to ten times with correct form. 
not trying to go in there and see how strong you are because that you can imagine waving a weight around overhead that's that's right within your limit that can cause an injury to knee or anything or to head <laughs> there you go and as i understand it you're 11 now you have to wait until you're what to be able to lift heavy weights i guess till you're uh, middle teens? Probably, yeah, 15 yeah. or 16, yeah. He's lifting some tremendous weights. For example, he can leg press 800 pounds uh, 10 Goodness. times. Goodness. But he didn't start out like that. He's tripled his strength in the last year, but it's still within his physical capacity, 8 to 10 to 15 times. Well, thank you so very much. It's been interesting. Thank you. And thank these you. folks are from Eugene, so they're yeah. local, local <laughs> boys. Mark and Heidi, I don't know if this makes you want to come out and work out, but it, I, I may stay here, I think, for an hour or two. Dale, drop and give me 20. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I knew you would say that, Mark. I'll get you for that. And Dale, no, we are not going to go work out. We're going to go eat lunch. We've got our priorities here. Thanks, Alrighty. Dale. at 16 minutes before the hour. Maybe it's the movies or TV wrestling, but kids are getting very interested in weight training. But how safe is it? Well, weight trainer Ken Sprague and his 11-year-old son Chris teamed up to co-author weight and strength training for kids and teenagers. And Ken and Chris are with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, for a long time, it was considered to be very dangerous to allow your kids to mess around with weights. What's changed? Well, for a long time, it was considered dangerous. Uh, it's a myth. Even the American Academy of Pediatrics now endorses weight training. Through a lot of research over the last decade, weight training has been found to be safe for kids. That's if you do it correctly, If of you do it correctly, of What course. age is a good age to start kids off? Well, it's not a matter of age. It's a matter of affective ability. For example, the average five-year-old is physically strong enough to lift weights and physically capable. But is the average five-year-old affectively capable? Is the attention span there? And the bottom line is that age is not the controlling factor. It's the individual child's ability to cope with a weight training program. Now, the way you start is through resistance exercises. And we're going to let Chris run through one of them for us. But, but, but before we do that, what difference have you noticed since you started lifting weights? Well, for example, when I'm playing basketball or throwing the shot, it enhances my sports performance. You, you feel stronger. You yeah. feel faster. Right, I get gonna, faster. We're going to put you through some uh, paces here. Ken, I'll let you lead the way. Okay. First of all, Chris is going to demonstrate something that a very young child could do, five or even less, and it's a push-up. We don't even have to begin with weights. And a child, of course, is going to be weak in the shoulder girdle. Chris, if you notice, has his knees on the floor. Go ahead, Chris. Let's do some work, Chris. Yeah, that, that lessens the total weight on the shoulder, shoulder girdle. Right, and then as you okay. get stronger, you then get you would stronger, go up to the toes. Chris, you want to go up on the toes. Again, increasing the weight on the shoulder girdle. All right. And, and as the child develops stronger, he or she will eventually go into weighted exercises. Let's see how you would start off with a curling exercise. We should make okay. it clear that, that uh, he has warmed up this morning, He's which is critical to this whole stage. process. stage, exactly. Go ahead and use the barbell. Now, what should you watch for as a parent to make sure your child's doing this safely? Because you could really pull your back out if you're not doing Yes, you right. can. Of course, the immediate pickup and then a controlled movement. You'll notice Chris is controlling every movement. There's no sway. There's no swing. All right. Now, you have another variation okay, on this Chris, on the bench. Would you set that down, please? And next, Chris, and again, we've chosen the barbell and the dumbbells this morning to give a demonstration of what is needed at home to get started on a weight training program. Small set of dumbbells, small set of barbells. That'll get the average child started. And when you can get through eight of these, then it's time to move on to heavier weights. When you weights. get through eight of these, you pick up a heavier barbell or a heavier dumbbell. Very quickly in closing, strengthening this area and uh, diminishing okay, this Chris, area. Okay, Chris, would you stand up with those dumbbells, please, and try a lunge? Okay. Now, how important is safety in this, this exercise? Very safe. Very important. Chris is using dumbbells. What's the worst that could happen? He might drop those dumbbells as opposed to using a barbell on his shoulder, placing it up here, it makes more sense for Chris to do the dumbbell work. And that'll make him a darn good skier as well as a basketball It sure player. will. Ken and Chris, thanks for both dropping in this morning. Thanks good luck for with your training. Us. We have just about uh, 12 minutes before the hour. Coming up next, the voice of Broadway's Helen Schneider. This health segment was sponsored by Maxwell House Coffee. Always good to the last drop.
kids can weight train properly. His co-author just happens to be his 11-year-old son, Chris. Good morning to both of you. Good morning, Ken, Gary. How are you? How are you? Fine, thank Chris, you. nice to see you. Thank you. Now, the American uh, Academy of Pediatrics has come out and said that kids that are starting very young, and I'm talking about under 13 or under 12, mm -hmm. they're starting to injure themselves uh, lifting weights. Uh, what's your attitude on this? Well, some kids can, of course, if they're lifting too heavy a weight. And that, of course, isn't what Chris and I recommend. We recommend lighter weights mm -hmm. that they can more easily control. And, in fact, the American Academy of Pediatrics does endorse that type of weight training. What, light weight training? Lighter weights. Okay. Ten repetitions per set. No maximum weights like powerlifting. All right, but if you do these lighter weights and, and, and more reps, you're not going to bulk up, which I would think is what the youngsters want to do. In other words, what are you, what are you, looking, what are you looking for to get out of weightlifting, Chris? Well, mostly I'm looking for enjoyment and enhanced sports performances. Okay. And I've gotten that. Well, I mean, your legs look pretty hefty and your arms. I mean, you look like you're a pretty good 11-year-old. I mean, who are your idols? If you were to pick a guy uh, in the movies or... Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor. So not Schwarzenegger, huh? Nah. Okay. What about the competitive weightlifting? What's the Academy saying on that? They're, they're really putting thumbs yeah, down on that, uh, aren't they? For any child or teenager less than 15 years old, the Academy does not endorse competitive weightlifting because, again, that's toying with a mm -hmm. maximal weight, putting too much stress on your body. All right. Well, uh, let's see an example of how much is right. Okay. okay. Sure. Chris, why don't we go over here and do some lunges? What do we need? These are each 10 pounds? Uh-huh. Now, Gary, how much does Chris weigh? Chris weighs about 145 pounds. Is there any relationship to the weights and his weight? Not direct relationship, but of course, what Chris might be using here is much different than what another child All might right. be using. It's based well, on the strength of the child. Then that begs the question, Chris, how, do does, how does do Chris it? know what's too much, or how do you know what's too much? If he can do 8 to 10 repetitions with that weight, okay. it's not too much. All right, okay. And this does what for Chris? This exercise is working primarily his upper thighs. Mm -hmm. For example, Gary, I could do the same movement with a weight with a squat. Okay. But I wouldn't recommend this movement for a child. Why? What would it do well, to him? If you notice, I could lose my balance. Okay. A child, especially a beginner, mm -hmm. like Chris or someone his age could. All right. If Chris loses his balance, the most that will happen is he'll drop those two little dumbbells to the floor. All right. Good point, Ken. Thank you, Chris. So he would do eight to ten of these. Mm -hmm. uh, how many sets? He would do two sets for each body part, two sets of that particular exercise okay. to work his legs. All right. And then he'd move on to the next All exercise. Right. And our next exercise is? Our next exercise. Let's do some lateral raises. Now, this is an exercise that Chris and I, and we often do train together, uh -huh. he and I could do together. Same exercise. There's no inherently bad situation for this particular exercise. Now, an older lifter might do overhead lifts, mm -hmm. working the same muscle part, the shoulders. All right, show us by pointing on Chris. What, what's the muscle part here that he's, he's uh, okay. working on? Generally, he's working the on shoulders. On his shoulders. Mm -hmm. I, it's funny. I, I remember meeting a woman. She said, Thanks, I, I judge men by their shoulders. <laughs> There's something about shoulders. Again, two sets of 8 to 10 reps two of this. Two sets of 8 okay. to 10 reps. And what you're mentioning, judge men by their shoulders, if you notice, Chris and I are quite different structurally. Mm -hmm. As he grows older in the next couple of years and adolescence turns on different hormonal systems, he's going to expand outwardly. He All won't right. have to worry so much about what exercises he does for those shoulders. Okay, let's but assume, right now he should. Let's assume Chris expands. Now, what happens if Chris just one day says, gee, I'm kind of tired of this. Is it all going to go away? No, it's not all going to go away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he'll retain the strength. As yeah. a matter of fact, one of the big uh, keys with Chris in weight training is he's become much.